I don't need to tell anyone with an autoimmune condition that many times, well, most of the times, autoimmune medications don't fix everything. Although our treatments can control a substantial amount of autoimmune inflammation, we can still be left with persistent joint pain or skin issues. Because we might be 80 to 90% better, we and our doctors are often satisfied and we are left to just deal with nagging joint pain and rashes. We use pain and steroid creams, NSAIDs and occasional prednisone, but is there any role for PRP or platelet rich plasma. Today, let's dive into and see if we can answer, can PRP injections help with my autoimmune condition? I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. When I sit down to write a new script, I often start with questions I've gotten over and over in clinic by those facing autoimmunity. But this topic actually is born out of a question I had. I see so many patients who by all accounts are doing well, yet they have nagging knee pain, wrist pain, or psoriasis patches that just won't go away. Oftentimes, it was such an effort just to get them where they are today that neither I nor them want to rock the boat and change up their medications because the treatment is doing something, it's just not doing everything. In situations like this, I hate telling someone to just deal with it. And instead, I wanna find solutions that will get the symptom to go away. And of course, a local solution, meaning anything that's on a pill that affects the entire body is always preferred. This is why for persistent skin issues, you may get three different creams because as annoying as applying creams all day is, it is a generally safer approach than adding some other pill or biologic medication. So it was in that mindset that I started poking around to see what the data shows on PRP. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. It has been used in surgery, wound healing, and cosmetics for about 15 years and used for joint pain relief for about as long. The whole reason PRP became a thing is the acknowledgement that PRP is full of growth factors that are important for tissue repair and regeneration, and they have anti-inflammatory effects. Lab studies showed that cartilage had a positive response when growth factors were around. Platelet-rich plasma was found to have a lot of growth factors, so it seemed like a no-brainer to put the platelet-rich plasma directly where they can have an effect on the cartilage and let the magic happen. Orthopedic and sports medicine offices everywhere started offering this miracle injection for osteoarthritis, and us, more cautious, skeptical, and conservative rheumatologists were like, mm, I don't know. Before we get into if and how best to use it for autoimmune disease, we need to take a moment to understand its effect in osteoarthritis, a condition that has a lot more experience with PRP. Long story short, the official results are mixed. Many studies have shown improvement in joint pain and function, and it even has performed better than NSAIDs and the more standard joint injection corticosteroids. However, because of course there is always a however, there are some large key studies that show absolutely no effect. So why is that and what's the truth? To answer that question, we need to understand how PRP injections are performed. Any website will tell you that PRP injections are done via three easy steps. Step one, they draw your blood. Step two, they spin or centrifuge your blood so the platelet-rich plasma will rise to the top. And step three, they then inject the PRP into your joint. Easy peasy. Well, it turns out these three steps are leaving out some key details that are actually very important when determining if the injection is gonna actually work. First off, how much blood they draw matters because this will determine how rich the plasma actually is with platelets. Remember, this is supposed to be platelet-rich plasma. Richness is also determined by the quality of the centrifuge. There are what are called single and double spin centrifuges and double spin machines get you a richer plasma than single. And the richness of the plasma or the higher the platelet concentration, the more likely the PRP injection is to work at decreasing 
osteoarthritis joint pain and function. It is these variables that are likely behind the different results in the medical literature as some studies are done with plasma that isn't that rich in platelets at all. So can we use PRP for autoimmune disease? Well, the data is limited. There are limited reports of successful use with dry eyes from Sjogren's, psoriasis, skin ulcers related to lupus, and joint pain from rheumatoid arthritis. And when I say limited, I mean literally just a handful of studies, most of which are just case reports. So it's too few to make any kinds of conclusions and certainly too few to recommend any sort of protocol. Most, however, are promising in that the cases they presented seem to improve with PRP treatment. And except for one report that raises the concern that PRP injection might actually make RA flare, the PRP is well tolerated without side effects. So given what we know about PRP and osteoarthritis and the different preparations that result in various levels of plasma richness and the lack of clear data in autoimmune disease, does this mean that PRP is totally off the table? Well, not necessarily. I love having a big toolbox, but the key is knowing which tool to use when. If you have an autoimmune inflammatory arthritis and are hoping that something like a PRP injection or two or three are going to be all you need to control your disease, then I hate to break it to you, but that's unlikely. There is no evidence, either practical or even theoretical, where that kind of approach would have a long-lasting curative effect on any autoimmune condition. However, if you have an autoimmune condition, are on treatments, and have made lifestyle changes that are controlling the majority of your inflammation, but you still have nagging shoulder, elbow, or knee pain, then PRP joint injections may be worth looking into. These nagging joint symptoms can be a result of wear and tear or tendon issues, both of which may respond well to appropriately done PRP injections. And by appropriately done, I mean where enough blood is taken to ensure the plasma is actually rich with platelets. So you wanna think close to 60 cc's of blood or four tablespoons. And the injection is placed with some sort of imaging device like an ultrasound machine. I have been aware of the controversy around PRP injections forever, and although I knew the data was mixed, I was interested by the patients I've seen who have had a great response and wanted to know if this is a tool I should be discussing with my patients more. And I think I got my answer. Yes. If you've ever had hand pain and locked fingers, then you likely have had a trigger finger. And to learn more, I would recommend watching this video next. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.